right, we're now that we're done with uh, Fiero Gray, we're going to jump on the Fiero Red and Blue. We started with Fiero Red, as that one needed quite a bit more work than Fiero Blue, since I had to seal off the roof, which we now have a solid roof. Finally, after a lot of putty work, you can see here where the old sunroof used to be. And now it is a solid roof Fiero, so that's finally done and finished after a lot of, like I said, putty work. We added the magnet, as we talked about previously. And now, the one thing that really bothered me about the rear deck lid is the shape is pretty good. They got all the proportions and everything correct, but it's completely flat on the underside. Which is not what the Fiero is really like, as the Fiero's deck lid underneath has all sorts of ribbing and molding to stiffen it make and give it strength so that's what we're going to do here i have marked off approximately a good facsimile of uh the molding that's underneath the fearless deck lid i'll put a picture of it right over uh here somewhere so that you guys can see what i'm talking about now, I'm going to duplicate that. I have these are the basic shapes that are under the molding. And I just have to make sure that it clears the engine, which I think I've got everything measured out properly. And now, out of some spare sprue, or not spare sprue, but some evergreen sprue, I'm going to be mocking up the shapes that I need to make to get this to look uh, the way I want it to. And hopefully, let's cross our fingers, this is going to work. Okay, guys, I'm going to start with the mocking up now. Don't mock me. All right, guys, here is the finished product. We have all of the support work laid in on the deck lid. And uh, it's a reasonable facsimile of the real thing. Um, I'm mostly happy with it. I think it did work out pretty well and gives us the look that we were going for. But uh, I think on the other one, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Because I'm not 100% happy with it. You will notice there is a bit of red paint on it because I did layer a coat of color on the deck lid. It's going to need a little bit of uh, wet sanding. As you can see right there, there's a little bit of something in the paint there. So we're going to have to fix that up and then get it ready for clear coat. But uh, like you see... This looks a lot better than just a plain, flat deck lid we had before. Some really good detail in there so that when you open it up, you'll see that ribbing in there. And it actually looks like it's made of something instead of just a flat piece of styrene. Okay, let's keep going with this build. Alright guys, we're back to work on Fiero Red here. And I really was not happy with the roof. As you know, the car I'm building this... That, that this car that this build is based on is a solid roof car so it doesn't have a sunroof now if you've been following the build you know that this model does have a sunroof built into every version of it so what i had to do is glue the sunroof panel in place and eliminate all the seams around the sunroof panel now once i did that i noticed that the rear of the roof had a couple of low spots in it now i've just spent the entire morning sanding and shaping and you after applying milliput putty last night and getting the roof to where i like it because i really wasn't happy with it before and uh, now i think i've got it where i want it so i gotta apply some primer and see how well this looks and hopefully this will be it and while i was at it i fixed one thing that really annoyed me which was on the underside of the roof you could see where the uh opening for the sunroof was still visible so I applied putty there smoothed all that out and now we have a nice solid roof which will be the headliner and hopefully we won't see any remaining vestiges of this sunroof opening so time to apply some primer and see how well this works all right guys I just sprayed the first layer of primer on there and I'm gonna stop there because I still got a lot of work to do on this roof I don't know if you guys can see the reflection there. You can see where the filler is still just slightly higher than the roof. So I got to do some more sanding on there. All right. Back to the sanding blocks. All right, guys. We're back to work on the roof of this thing again. 
you wouldn't think it was so hard to seal one of these openings up as it is just a flat surface but that's what makes it tough because you want a nice even reflection across a flat surface and you can't really tell what you've done until after you've primed it and if you see any defects you have to go back in and do it again so i'm hoping that this time which is probably about the third time the roof is completely sealed and will be ready for paint after priming as you can see, the inside is completely sealed. Don't worry about those edges there. They'll never be seen when the model is completed. But we will have a nice flat roof, which is what you will see if you look in. Inside, you will see nothing but a nice flat solid roof, which will be basically the headliner. So, so far, we're going pretty good. Going to lay some primer down, let it dry, and see if we're finally done with the roof portion of this. Okay, now we have the finished product. I think I've got the roof where I want it. It's just a wet sand away. Well, after I let the primer cure completely, it took about four coats of primer before I could see what I wanted to see. As you can see in the reflection here, there's slight, very, very slight imperfection in there, which. Once I put the layers of paint and gloss coat on it, it will be practically invisible. Or hopefully completely invisible. But right now I'm very happy with the way the roof is looking. It's completely solid. And I shouldn't have any problem with painting now. Yay! That part's over. Okay guys, we're back at work on the Fiero triple build, which is now a double build. I keep calling it a triple build, and we have one finish so far, so we're working on number two and three now. Now, well, I got the Fiero blue wall painted up. You guys have already seen that, and she's looking pretty spiffy. Need to do a little bit of work. Got a little bit of dirt in the paint here on the rear deck lid, so that's going to need some sanding and possibly another coat of paint the body came out pretty good a couple of small specks there but a little bit of wet sanding on that going to fix that right up and then we're going to do some clear even though the paint laid so beautifully it doesn't look like it even needs a clear coat but we're going to clear it anyway because that'll give us a little material to work on to smooth everything out it looks really good though what we're talking about now is sanding wet sanding the primer to give us a really smooth finish so that we can lay our color and what I wanted to point out was something in spe uh, specific here the primer even if it lays super smooth this is the Tamiya pink primer and I love the Tamiya primers because they really do lay amazingly smooth no matter how hard you put them down now this uh, primer here, when you at first glimpse, it looks super smooth, but even this could use a little bit of cleaning up. So I want to show you how I know when I've sanded enough and when it's as smooth as it's going to get to give me the best uh, finish for my paint. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear this. You hear how rough that is? I've already sanded this part of it. Let me see if you can get closer to the microphone. You hear how rough it is when I get to the back of the car? That's the unsanded primer, which even though it appears to be smooth, is still a rougher texture than what the sanded primer is. So you can also hear that when you're sanding. As, as you're sanding the smoother primer, that's what that sounds like. Now listen to how loud it gets here. You hear that? So 
So while you're sanding, you're listening as well as looking at your project. And when you, you're going to hear it start to get a little bit quieter. And it's going to sound a little bit smoother, not quite as rough. And that's telling you that you're really getting rid of all of the roughness that's in the primer. Don't know if it really translates well over the camera here. But in person, you can really hear the difference. And right now it's sounding uniformly smooth, which is telling me that I can pretty much stop sanding now, as the roughness is pretty much gone. So then I take a little paper towel, I wipe it down, and then I look for a semi-gloss finish, which is telling me that I have the primer really smoothed out. Then I'll just run my hand over it again. And now, listen to the difference. You guys hear that? Completely different than it was before. And that is because now the primer is much smoother than it was before. And you can see how it's starting to get a little bit of a semi-gloss finish to it. So the primer is really smoothed out now. This is really going to help you when you lay your paint down to get a super smooth, super shiny finish. So that's just a little something about uh, sanding and why wet sanding I think is very important on the primer as well as on the paint. Because if I were to keep sanding and buffing this out, I could probably get a gloss finish out of this. We don't want that, but you probably could. So we're going to do a little bit more of the wet sanding here on the roof. As you all know, the problems I've been having with making this roof as smooth as I can, which I think I have finally licked my last issue with this roof. As I'm really liking what I'm seeing now. Now I'm using a 3000 grit sanding sponge. To smooth this primer out. And I'm really happy with this roof now. Yep, I gotta think I'm gonna be really happy with it. Alright guys, I think we're good with the wet sanding on this now. Going to give it a nice wash, get all the residue off of it, and then it's off the paint. Now here we have the completed and wet sanded piece. Uh, I like to say that it's got a luster like unpainted plastic, so that when it looks like unpainted plastic, and has that same sheen that's when I like to say that I'm done and I'm ready to paint so there we go guys gonna get ready to put her in the uh, paint booth
Okay guys, and here we have the results of all the work that we've just done on these cars. As you can see, Fiero Red is super nice and shiny. Only thing left now is to put a good clear coat on it and, well, wet sand it and give a good clear coat to it. As it's got a really nice reflection, the, that paint relays really, really nicely. But a bit of wet sanding and a clear coat and Fiero Red body will be done. As for Fiero Blue, we've already started the wet sanding of the body. We did the metallic gray paint on the lower trim to match the real car. Only thing left now is to give a nice clear coat to the body and then we move on to all of the black accents. Such as the trim bar. The trim bar the uh windshield opening yeah the some of the rear flying buttress uh, area is black we have to paint the interior for the headliner so all the stuff that's really going to cause me all the heartache <laughs> with this type of job all the little trim pieces so now let's take a look at some of the other stuff we painted okay here we have the front bumper as you can see, painted in the blue, we've got our metallic gray lower accents along with the rear bumper. That one came out, that came out really nice. As you can see, all very, very happy with the way that turned out. And here we have the hood, which has been clear coated. It was just wet sanded and now we have the clear coat over it to bring it super shine back and wow that is really really shiny and I haven't even touched it yet there's been no wet sanding no polishing nothing and look at the reflection in that wow so I'm very happy with that we still have to paint the underside of the hood and here's the rear deck lid I'm gonna have to clean that up a little bit as we got a few speckles in there that we didn't want but again you can see the Reflections are amazing in that. Very, very happy. And that's going to require a bit of wet sanding and some cleaning up. And that will turn out really, really nicely. Even though we did get a little bit of dust in it. But I think that will polish out beautifully. This is a testament to how good the Tamiya paint is. This is no clear coat. This is just paint laid down. Look at that. That is almost absolute perfection. I mean, I don't think I even really have to clear coat this hood. It came out so fantastically shiny. I mean, and really sharp, crisp reflections in it. You would never know if I had never clear coated this. I mean, look at the reflection of that light. Wow. I am amazed. Always amazed at Tamiya rattle can paint. Again, have to paint the undersides, but... Wow, that just came out fantastic. And our last bit is the rear deck lid. This is going to require a little bit of work. I'm going to have to wet sand this and polish it out. And clear it as there is a little bit of something in the paint there. So we're going to have to try and clean that up. It's kind of funny. Only the two rear deck lids gave me trouble. And the hoods came out fantastic. Don't know if that means anything, but... There you go, guys. That is the result of all of our work. We're getting closer and closer to the finish line. On Fiero Red and Fiero Blue. All right, see you guys on the next one.